So you might be blessed with impeccable hearing. You can pick up the tiniest little details in your music from the headphones that you love. But you happen to also be cursed with mediocre eyesight, and you wear glasses. So what happens when you want to get some passive closed-back headphones and you wear glasses? I'll tell you what happens. You feel sadness. The light in your life has been snuffed out. The joy is gone. You feel sad because most likely your experience with closed-back headphones is going to be impacted by leakage effects. Leakage is something that you generally don't want in anything in life. The same is true in headphones. And I'm gonna give you guys some advice on how to deal with this problem. But just before going any further, I wanna give a quick shout out to headphones.com who makes all of these videos possible. Headphones.com has made it a mission to be a resource for the community, being a great place to learn about and buy headphones with a ridiculous 365 day return policy so that folks don't have to worry about, you know, their purchase not being right for them. And they're also the reason why this channel is able to exist and we're able to do what we do. So if you like what we do here and you find any of it useful or valuable, consider supporting us by making your next audio purchase at headphones.com. So what am I talking about? Well, with closed back headphones, they might measure a certain way. You might see people online talking about how they have this amazing jaw dropping bass, uh, and then you get them in and you realize that uh, there is no jaw dropping bass when you're listening to them. It's, uh, it's just kind of anemic, it's kind of flaccid. Well, the reason for this is because the bass is dropping out as a result of the fact that maybe you wear glasses or you have a head such that you're getting some kind of, of leakage effect going on. There is some sort of break in the seal or imperfection in the seal for the headphones that you're wearing that would otherwise have jaw-dropping bass, and for you it just doesn't. And I think this is actually one of the most common sources of disagreement that you see when people are talking about headphones online. The differences in what you're experiencing is down to the frequency response of the headphone at your eardrum and being different from somebody else's. It's not down to anything special to do with the drivers or anything to do with the technicalities or anything like that. And it's not that one person is wrong and another is right. It's literally just that the seal integrity is different between two people or between multiple people, you get the idea. And to demonstrate this, here is a measurement of the Focal Azuris for a head that is not wearing glasses, looks pretty good. And here is an example of the Focal Azuris when glasses are being worn. Now this is a little bit dependent on how thick the arms are of the glasses. Uh, this, so if you're wearing, you know, super thin arms, this might not be as significant a factor, but you know, it, it does have an effect. The other effect is of course down to the clamp force. That's a whole thing. And the same is true for many closed back headphones, like the DCA headphones, like this one here. The frequency response might look great on paper, but if you're the kind of person who loves wearing super stylish, flashy glasses that have really thick arms, um, you know, it, it's likely that you won't get that same experience. It's likely you won't get the experience that the measurements indicate. And that's a shame. Uh, actually, with the DCAs, um, these ones tend to have a little bit more clamp force, and I think this is also in part to kind of help with that problem, <laughs> um, so that the response can be a little bit more consistent, even for people who do wear glasses, but you get the point. All right, uh, so what do you do about this? Uh, get glasses with really thin arms. Uh, these glasses here, I, I actually have these specifically for audio purposes. These are my audiophile glasses, which is one of the dumbest sentences that I've ever said, but you get the reasons why. You want to minimize the potential for the arms of the glasses to break the seal of the headphones that you're wearing. Um, in most cases, these glasses are fine, but even these ones that have thin arms specifically for this purpose do reveal a difference for certain headphones. Um, and this is something that I have to verify with in-ear microphones. So try and find glasses that have the thinnest arms possible if you are an audiophile. Uh, the next recommendation I have is use contact lenses. Uh, contact lenses suck and they're annoying. I don't use contact lenses for that reason, but that might be a trade-off that's worth it for you. Uh, it's worth considering that. The next option is of course to get LASIK or some sort of laser corrective surgery to fix your wonky ass vision. This is one where, I mean, that's kind of extreme, but weirdly, it is something that I have considered and I might still do. <laughs> Are you really an audiophile if you're not willing to have corrective ocular surgery to get the best experience of your headphones? Are your eyes audiophile enough? <laughs> you know, I'm mostly joking here, but that would actually have a very real benefit uh, to being able to use a wider range of headphones, particularly closebacks. Uh, but if you're not willing to do any of those things, you should probably consider in-ear headphones, IEMs. I did a video a while ago on why IEMs are worse than over-ear headphones, and I also did a video on why they are better. This is one of the areas in which they are better. 
This is a real win for IEMs, and it's honestly one of the most compelling ones I can see, uh, because if you are in an, in an environment where you would have to use closed back headphones, I actually think that in most cases, you're probably better off using IEMs if you wear glasses because of leakage effects, regardless of any other benefits that over your headphones might have. So definitely consider IEMs. But the last thing, of course, to consider is open back headphones that are gonna be less sensitive to this problem. Now, that's not to say that they are not going to change at all in the presence of a leak. In fact, some headphones, some open back headphones like these ones here, uh, the bass will actually increase. And there, there's a whole complicated reason for that. Uh, we don't need to get too into the weeds on that here. But basically, these have such massive drivers that are undamped that effectively causes a bass boost when there's a break in the seal. It's kind of fun. Uh, but open back headphones in general are, yeah, less sensitive to this problem. And even though there are also all kinds of other benefits to open back headphones with respect to the acoustics, the sound, you know, low acoustic impedance, not having to deal with the back wave, etc. The fact that they're less sensitive to leakage is a major benefit for folks like me who wear glasses. But of course, that's kind of unsatisfying if you are deliberately looking for headphones to isolate yourself, right? Like that's the whole point of closed back headphones and in-ear headphones. And so I have another kind of bonus tip for you guys to consider. And it's kind of, it's kind of unsatisfying. It's kind of unfortunate, but I'm going to tell you guys anyways. So most of you guys watching will probably be aware of the benefits of nice closed back headphones that are tuned well over what you get from the more consumerish headphones like what you get from Apple and Bose and Sony, etc. But one area where some of those consumer oriented headphones are significantly better than these is because they have leakage compensation built in, they're able to recognize when there's a break in the seal, say if you wear glasses, uh, and compensate the bass accordingly. So these headphones, they're active, they have DSP in them, and they have various different sensors in them to compensate for the loss of bass that would otherwise occur. So for those headphones, despite whatever downsides they have to their sound quality generally, you're likely to get a more consistent response, a more consistent experience with them. Uh, I'll just say that not all of them have this feature. So in that respect, you're kind of limited to looking at the ones that do, and they may have all kinds of other trade-offs and downsides. Like the Apple AirPods Max is a great example of this. It does a very good job of leakage compensation, but there are some meaningful downsides to that headphone, both in terms of its sound quality and in terms of you know the comfort and the fit. So my last unsatisfying piece of advice here to deal with this problem is to recognize that you're not gonna get a consistent response if you wear glasses and you're looking at closed back headphones and to just boost up the bass with EQ accordingly. Like with passive headphones, they're not gonna do this for you. You have to do, you have to do the compensation bit manually for yourself. Um, and it's not that hard to do. In this case, we're talking literally just about boosting up the bass with a fairly wide you know, filter of some kind, boosting up the low frequency information. You don't need to get, you know, super specific with your EQs or anything like that. You don't need to use an EQ profile. You can just, you know, say, okay, well, this is kind of how the headphone is intended to sound. It's tuned like this. It's, you know, meant to perform like this. I'm not getting that on my head because I wear glasses. So I need to compensate for the loss of bass accordingly. And I do that with EQ. At least if you're trying to get the intended performance of the headphone or the experience that the headphone is intended to deliver in ideal conditions. But that's going to do it for this video. Just for folks who are unaware, we do post the measurements of all these headphones on the forum linked below. And we do talk about some of these aspects to the headphones performance. Say, for example, how they might perform in the presence of a leak like what might be caused by glasses. And as an example, uh, in Listener's article on the Azuris here, he measured it also with a Capra strap to indicate what happens when you increase the clamp force to bring back some of the bass that you might otherwise not have if you have a smaller head, that sort of thing. So if you're looking for that information, uh, check the forum thread linked below, but also check headphones.com for where we publish all of the articles on this stuff. As always, you can find me or other like-minded audio people in our Discord, also linked below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.